Hey, yo, what is good, everybody? Your boy, Danny Soul here, um, bringing you an update on our off-season training program. For those of you who are curious, our off-season training program will begin Monday, June 28th. That is the beginning of our off-season training program. The week prior, from the 21st until the 27th, we're going through a deload or a transition week where training was not the priority. Um, we encourage people, especially those who competed uh, at the event the previous weekend, stay home if you want. Do whatever kind of training that you want. Don't train. Um, take care of your personal responsibilities and, 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 and really disconnect yourself with a training program as much as possible. We did publish training because we have an online platform and uh, people expect uh, content from us and people expect us to post training, but it was not a priority. So off-season training program will officially begin the 28th. Now, before we get into the specifics of what off-season is, uh, I, I would like to give some insight as to why we structure our seasons as we do and why we structure our program as we do. So when it comes to the competitive style of CrossFit or the sport of fitness, it tends to be very technical or what we call in our training program, very noisy. What does that mean? Well, um, the, the, the nature of competitive CrossFit pieces or competition style workouts, they're very technical. They have a, multiple moving parts, usually very technical exercises and a very high skill and mental demand. So that's what we call noise. There's so many moving parts. There, there's so many elements to address. And when the noise is always turned up so much, makes it really challenging to address the specific intricacies of competitive pieces, right? Take a handstand walk, front rack lunge, ring muscle up style piece. There's so many rooms for mistakes in regards to your level of fitness, your transitions, your movement patterns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and when the noise is so high or so loud, it's challenging for us to dissect each piece one by one and really become proficient in every single element of a workout like that. We'll look at CrossFit as a whole. CrossFit as a whole is, is essentially, it's, it's a training discipline that combines multiple other functional style training disciplines. We've got Russian kettlebell training, you've got endurance sport, Olympic style weightlifting, powerlifting, what we call gymnastics, plyometric exercises, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There, and there's a ton more that I didn't even come close to mentioning. Now, in order to become the best CrossFitters and most well-rounded CrossFitters possible, what our belief is, is we need to segment those different elements of CrossFit training as much as possible in our off-season. That doesn't mean when we're getting ready to compete, we would do the same thing. However, when we have the luxury to address our training and take our time with true development, we can segment them as much as we can. So what does that mean? Take a workout like that, for example. What did we say? I think I said handstand walks, front rack lunges, and ring muscle ups. So before we start addressing the handstand walks, we're gonna look at the structure of the shoulder. We're gonna make sure that my client or athlete has the proper musculature and uh, has, has the proper movement patterns to even perform these technical handstand walks before throwing them upside down on their hands. We wanna make sure that they can support the load walking upside down. Before we talk about moving faster and how to transition faster, we're gonna address the strength in the shoulder, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the kinds of things that we do in our off season. We segment them as much as possible. Before I throw you upside down and I tell you to combine the handstand walk with the ring muscle up, well, let's make you the best handstand walker possible. Before we even start talking about a handstand walk, let's go a step beyond and let's make sure that you have phenomenal stability in the overhead position so you have a solid overhead position when you're performing the handstand walk. Right? Let's take the ring muscle up, for example. Before we talk about how to get an uprise and how to cycle off the rings better, have a greater understanding of the position of your feet, your arch, and your hollow swing position, let's talk about getting you nice and strong. So once again, you have that prerequisite strength so your shoulders can handle more kipping ring muscle ups. So how would we do that? Well, we would address that by gymnastic strength exercises, which also trickles down to the, the handstand walk, right? Uh, 
Would we do that by emphasizing more kipping exercises or more strict exercises? We would do that absolutely by emphasizing more strict and strength-based gymnastics exercises, right? Um, and the same thing goes for Olympic-style weightlifting, right? In, in, in CrossFit pieces, we tend to see a lot of touch-and-go, um, high rep exercises, which is great. Um, but for our off-season training program, instead of emphasizing that, we want to turn our athletes into the best weightlifters possible. And we're going to do that through running as well and strength training protocols, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of a mouthful, but I'm, 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 I'm trying to get the point across that what we really want to do is segment all of these different facets of our fitness protocol and become proficient in all of them independently of one another. So I want to become the best runner I can, not thinking about mixing running with box jumps or deadlifts or rowing. I want to become the best rower as I can without mixing that and turning the noise up and mixing it with toes to bar or handstand pushups or double unders. I want to do the same on the bike. I want to do the same on the deadlift, et cetera, et cetera. So our off-season training program will look like a very pure strength and conditioning style program. It's not going to look like your average CrossFit program. We're not going to do a bunch of wads. We don't necessarily believe the best way to get better at wads is to do more of them. What we want to do is separate them as much as possible and really address all of the in intricacies uh, that make CrossFit what it is, right? So that's why we call this an off-season training program. We really like giving it that label so everyone understands what they're going to get when they are participating in a protocol like this. You can't expect that you're going to click on our training program and see Fran and Grace and Isabel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. While all of those things are important and we will touch on them, that is not necessarily going to be the emphasis from our off-season training program. So what you'll more than likely see is you'll see two mixed or two wads per week only. Um, we will be emphasizing tremendously on very pure strength training. Uh, there's also going to be a great emphasis on Olympic weightlifting style technique. And like I said before, strict strength-based gymnastics with a ton of aerobic work. Um, as our off-season training program progresses throughout the weeks, we will turn up the intensity. We will turn up the noise. You will see us start to mix certain elements after we feel comfortable that we've established a solid base. Um, and we feel that that is the best way to build the most well-rounded CrossFitters or sport of fitness athletes. There's another huge element to this as well. When we compete and, and, and we train in a discipline like CrossFit so often, we tend to see really high stress hormones. Our level of cortisol is elevated tremendously, which is the stress hormone. Uh, lots of injuries, lots of burnout. So this is your time to also create some space between competition and yourself and assess some of the things that you could have done better last season. For some of you guys, that may be nutrition. For many of you, it's your recovery protocols. For a lot of you guys, um, and I've, I've talked to many of you one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it's, it's having the ability to meditate and understand uh, what your priority should be throughout your training journey. There's so many different things that many of you guys need to address, and now is the time to do it. It's not before competition. It's not before things start to kick up. This is your opportunity to address many of those things. The last thing that I'd like to touch base on is the differences between compete and elite for this off season. So um, now the, the, the biggest difference is really going to be the volume and the time commitment that people have. Elite will be uh, a, a, a huge priority time spend. Uh, it's going to be a lot of volume. We absolutely expect for you to split your sessions up three hours or more. It is absolutely way too much volume to do in one session. And for those of you who train in the gym that do not respect that break, we're going to be pushing you in a really big way to uh, respect the space between the two sessions. So that's why we came up with a design for Compete. Compete is going to be very similar to Elite for this offseason. The biggest difference will be the time investment. 
Uh, many of you guys don't have the ability to spend two full sessions in the gym. So what we've done with Coach Nate is we've assessed what our elite off-season training program is, and we've picked the priority elements, and we've included them in about a 90-minute to two-hour training piece per day for you guys so everyone can make sure that they are accomplishing exactly what they have to. And we recognize that many of you play the game of a little bit of compete and a little bit of elite, and that's absolutely fine if you have access to both programs. But uh, really the big message here is if you're going to train two sessions a day, you need to do it smart, you need to have adequate nutrition, and really training two sessions a day is for people who have aspirations to compete as a professional to do CrossFit or sport of fitness as a professional athlete. That's the focus, and that's really the only intention why someone should be training multiple sessions per day. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them. We're here to listen. We're here to uh, engage with you guys and talk about what our next steps are. We encourage challenging us, asking us questions, and just uh, being involved, all right? Thanks, and good luck. Peace.